They sell it all in the beginning as something quite logical. You take on a matrix of thought that is not your it's own. It's so strong that it sticks you like very glue. Very controlled, very suggestible. You just don't see it happening to you. You justify so much. There is no logical explanation other than faith. That was a peek at the riveting new HBO documentary, Going Clear, Scientology and the Prison of Belief. It premiered Sunday night to a huge audience and is now the network's biggest documentary in almost a decade. In the days running up to the broadcast, the Church of Scientology hammered the film on social media and in sharply worded emails to news programs like The Kelly File. But so far, it looks as though that campaign may have backfired, with plenty of folks coming out to support its message. Earlier, I spoke with Mike Rinder, a former Scientologist who spent years, decades, defending Scientology, and he is one of the people heavily featured in the documentary. All right, so let's start with your story, because you, were, you say you were a Scientologist from the age of six. How could you, I mean, it started back in 1950, I guess, so what, mm -hmm. your parents were Scientologists? Yes, that's right. At that point, though, are they telling you about Xenu and the, <laughs> no. the belief that these little bodies came down to Earth and started inhabiting people and they had to be gotten out with auditing and all that? Not at all. In fact, if you were to go to the vast majority of Scientologists today, right now, they would not even know about that. Why not? Because it's kept secret. It's kept secret until you are, quote, ready for it, which means you've made progress to a point where you are considered to be spiritually advanced enough to be able to deal with that material. Mm. Now, other people will say, uh, the other view of that is, until you've been caught in the trap well enough, nobody in their right mind would stick around once they read or heard that. Mm -hmm. Hubbard said that... L. Ron Hubbard, the L. founder of Scientology. Yeah, excuse me. That's L. Okay. Ron Hubbard said that that material is dangerous to people who are not spiritually prepared for it. And Scientologists believe that mm -hmm. to Did this you, day. Do you believe it started off with a noble purpose and morphed into something else? I do. I do believe that there was some uh, intent on the, on the part of Mr. Hubbard to help people. I also believe that there were more nefarious motives behind some of that as Making well. Making money? Making money. Declaring yourself a church means you don't have to pay taxes if the IRS agrees that you're a church. That's exactly right. And it also affords you enormous protection. Protection, which is one of the subjects of this documentary and the, the a thing that I feel very passionate about, is that abuses that go on within the Church of Scientology are in some form protected because they can hide behind the cloak of religion. Under the banner of religion. One of, being a child in this, in this church, um, let's talk about that, because one of the pieces that the documentary addresses is the treatment, at least for a period, of children, and, and the convincing of members to sort of hand over their children to the church, and a woman who's heavily featured in it named Spanky talks about her, her last straw with Scientology and rescuing her child and making a run for it, leaving the church, and off they went. How long was that kind of thing going on? <laughs> For a long time, I, I mean many, many, many years, uh, Spanky and myself and uh, other people that are featured in this documentary were part of what's called the Sea Organization. And the Sea Organization is the, the central core of Scientology, the people that work and live in church facilities. Uh, it's analogized, not exactly correctly, but it's analogized to the clergy in the film. Mm -hmm. The, my two children were raised that way. I have two children who were born into the Sea Organization, and they were raised uh, with nannies in uh, a, a nursery that was not uh, a standard nursery. They did, did they sleep in your house at night? No. They oh, slept under the care of somebody else? Often. Not always. What were they being taught? Was it about educating them into the proper Scientology beliefs? Yes, very much so. In fact, there is a book that was written by Jana Miscavige, who is the niece of David Miscavige, which goes into some detail of how, what her life was like growing up as a child of a Sea Org member. And 
it's pretty horrific. Today, the church doesn't allow Sea Org members to have children. So really? The circ- no. It was, it was stopped in, I, I guess it was like the early 90s or something, mm-hmm. um, just because it was such a problem. And now, if you want to be in the Sea Organization, you may not have children. And there is much more. Mike Rinder next on Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, and one of the biggest controversies for the church.